Good afternoon. Good evening. And good morning, depending on where you are. And I welcome you to this afternoon special exposition. We are live, we are direct, we are live on YouTube, and we are live on Facebook in different Facebook platforms. If you are watching, share the video a lot. Umuchukuo kikabiyama to come and hear the gospel of Elohim. It is very, very important because I have seen that it is very, very imperative that I discuss and expose some atrocious things that I am seeing happening within the struggle. Because what I am seeing right now, it is something that, you know, that is unbelievable. It is indeed unbelievable. Now, let me, before we proceed, let me confirm that we are indeed live in our different Facebook platforms. Yes, we are. So, welcome to this program. You know, there are many things that is happening before we go to some other things. I want to touch on this issue of Canon Takano, Nen Nayanya, and Aloy Ejimako. Because there are some inquiries that I made. And I found out something that does not add up. And that made me you know, ask myself several questions as per reason why these things are not adding up, as per reason why the things that are happening, the things that is going on right now is going on. I actually try to, you know, I try to see what exactly is going on. I was trying to solve this. I was actually trying to work it out by, try. you know, I'm trying to solve a lot of mystery. You know, there is so many of them that need to be solved. But indeed, we need to start with the, you know, current result that we have at hand. In my own ways, I like people who are very, very professional. I value professionalism in everything that I am engaging into. Especially when it comes to the job that put food on my table, I prefer to be professional. People who knows me, they call me difficult person because of that. Now, that is the reason why I am going to talk about Barista Aloy Ejimako. Kanon Takano, Nen Nayanya. For now, this trio are the people that I want to talk about. The reason why I am going to be talking about these people is none other reason but because of their current activities in IPOB. It is true that a lot of question are being raised so many questions have been raised what is going on why is people misbehaving why are people why are people disobeying the leadership now there are some people there are some things that i want you to understand now there was 
something I also discovered. You know, something I also discovered that there were some advices. You know, a brother can give a brother an advice. A brother can give an bro a brother an advice. And that is the reason why, you know, it is not a big deal. And it is always the reason why the enemy will use those who knows you better in order to, you know, destroy you. What am I trying to say? What I am trying to say is that there was an advice given to Mazen Namdekano before embarking on the journey where, you know, which took him to where he is today. And in that advice, that was because of the advice that Mazen Namdekano was not you know, did not alert the DOS about his movement in that regard. And if you if you look at those who gave him that advice, Kanon Takano was part of it. Kanon Takano was part of it. That, you know, because the reason why they gave him that advice, it is because they had already planned on what to do with him. And of course, they know that if there is anything that is, if there is any eventuality or their plan, they succeed, they know that they have set up people like autopilot today. My exposition today has many branches, but I want to take it one step at a time. I am going straight to the point I am not building a background. I am going straight to the point. Because we have done so many exposition in the way that whenever we speak, you will understand. Now, if he was advising Mazen Namdekano to make his movement of that time to become, you know, a secret one, you know, because if you begin to ask your question, your, yourself a question, why is it that the leadership does not know the, the, that movement that Mazen Namde can, you know, embarked on? It is because of the advice. Now he embarked on this journey. Do you know the reason why I will categorically tell you? It is because... <laughs> For the first time, I am going to tell you, it was Mazen Namdekan who bought himself a flight ticket that he used to go to uh, Kenya. It was himself who paid, who bought himself the flight ticket that took him to Kenya. Because of that same advice, let's make your journey to be secret. Because Namaranda Neze, this is a delicate time. Let it remain in the family. And when this advice was coming through, the enemy has already had already planned on what to do with Mazen Namdekan. And those plans that they have made on what to do with Mazen Namdekan, you know there is no other person who could have carried it out there is no other person who could have known better there is no other person who could have you know given the details of what of the you know position of mazen namdekan other than those who gave him the advice to make his journey to be secret so that now, Kanon Takano happens to be one of those advisors. He happened to be one of those advisors. Like I said before, Mazen Nam the Kano paid his flight ticket by himself. He bought himself a flight ticket to Kenya. 
Are you paying attention? Like I said, the people who knew that he, he went to Kenya was Canon Takano. Then uh, the, the people who later, you know, found out where he was, was, you know, this autopilot gang leader, Simon Eba. He later found out that Mazen Namdekano was in Kenya. Because during that time, when these things were happening, they know, they know what they have been planning. You know, there is a saying that says that Judas sold Jesus, but didn't know that the you know situation of Jesus will be the way it is. It, it, it you know, we go the way it went. He believed that he will sell Jesus and enrich himself and everything will be all right. Jesus will do magic and everything will be all right. Why am I, what am I trying to say? I am trying to tell you there are many people that are involved in the issue that is no made Mazen Namdekano to be where he is today. So many of them, we are uninformed. So many of them we are informed. They did not actually know the magnitude of what they are engaging with. And so many of them, direct and indirect, join force to betray our leader. And today, they were proactive. Immediately, the news broke out. They were proactive to start playing a blame game. Now, coming to these things that I have been working out here, coming to what I've been working out here, I don't know if you will be able to understand or see how I am solving this matter. Because this is a big issue that you need to like, you know, you need to bring everybody that is involved and place them in front of you. And you will remember how they started. You will remember how they began to play blame game when there was a disagreement because there was already disagreement. There were people who were not informed of what they were about to do. They believed they were just going to be given money. Just like when they finished what they were doing, coming into media space to recruit the media warriors. They were media warriors who were not informed of what they were doing. They were tricked into doing what they were doing. And when they were tricked into doing what they were doing, so many of them realized they withdraw. And they actually did 360 degrees and they left them behind but and this is exactly what happened because there were many people involved when you see autopilot you do canon takano and all these people when they are fighting each other it was the blame game people who knows better people who have evidence who who have evidence with regards to their activities blackmailers there are people who are very very professional in blackmailing those who are professional in blackmailing are the people who have the upper hand because probably they kept the record of your own game that you are involved with knowing that you have you don't have any record of their own game they now float into social media and they started, first of all, playing blame game after they must have had misunderstanding. First thing they tried to do was integration of uh, Simon Eba into the leadership structure, which failed. Second thing they went ahead to do integration of Simon Eba into Radio Biafra. It failed. When it failed, that was when they started noticing that, you know, it will continue to fail. 
and now promises were not you know as it was promises were no longer as it was from the inception or from the beginning now there were clauses added to the promises which what triggered the blame game they started on on one another on each other now this blame game they know that you you know you know if canon takano was going to come and say riteze was involved was going to come and say bridget was involved and before they did this they recruited some pastors recruited some pastors i don't know if they are really pastors or they are just pastors for the job these pastors that they recruited is to continue to bring fake prophecy or the, the, the fake prophets they recruited is to continue to bring fake prophecy believe you me there were people who joined them this their cabals of betrayers there were people who joined them after you know after everything was done people were left in the dark like that person who was wearing who wears a draw a dra um full on him uh is it what uh, this full on it this thing on their head they were left behind they were recruited after that master prophet he was left behind he was recruited after and the reason why for his recruitment was he has a platform he has a platform now and he is vocal on the social media he has nothing doing number two i want you to keep bringing these things that i am telling you keep putting it together because i am going to give you a conclusion now when they started playing blame game you know little did you know the ones who are the family members knew that the people they were dealing with they are maradona because the person who contacted them contacted this person contacted that person contacted that person they were not contacted once they were not contacted once but at the end of this, they, st they now started noticing each other. So you were involved also. So you were involved also. So that was involved. You know, that was when this issue started escalating. So now people now believe, no, this one, before you will expose me, let me come out and expose you. Because they will contact you and tell you, you do this path. Make sure since you are an insider, Make sure you bring this person to be in this section of the leadership. Make sure you bring Simon Elba to the um, to Radio Biara, who advised Mazen Namdekano to integrate uh, Simon Elba to Radio Biafra. Who did? Who did? The same people which Canon Takano was involved. When all these things, this we are the this we are exactly what they were you know the way they commissioned them whoever that commissioned all these people was very very smart because he commissioned them in a way that these people will not know exactly what is your role you will not know exactly what is my role you will not know exactly what is the other person's role until the deal is done now when they realize oh is this the deal now at the end they start playing blame game blame game and in this blame game they are playing you know this one believe that this one have evidence against him and the reason why canon takano did not come out to say he is not the one who you know debunk all this allegation of his you know accomplices it is because 
he knows that he, he, he you know he does not know what they have and he knows those who are involved and the reason why they started being proactive in attacking him so that he will shut his mouth not to even think about you know reasoning these people were involved they made him to know yours is going to be the worst case scenario because you are part of the family And when this, all these things, if eventually all these things now cast, his end game will be like, how can I be, how can Biafra struggle take my uncle or my brother or my father and my aunt or my mother, whichever one, I don't want to pay attention to the, whether he's a brother or he's a family, but all I know is he's a family member. His end game will be like this Biafra struggle took away the people that he loved. That he never supported the idea. But his brother was the one pushing it and it is affecting the family. That was going to be his, um, his the way he is going to find a, find a soft landing. That is the reason why he does not care about any other person but where the money is because they thought it was finished when these issues you know when the mazen nam the kano was taken you will wonder what could be the reason why he said to the person not to tell anybody and they concealed it for eight days. What could be the reason for this? Could it be that the person who is handling them told them, you need to give it a week so that for everything to be, you know, to be confirmed that indeed we got him without any hustle. You know, that is my speculation. What I'm telling, I told you now, this is my speculation. The reason why he will say he will conceal the, the information. But where there is money, you see, he is, she is not innocent. You know, we always say, you know, we, uh, you know, we were always saying that Nenayanya was is just emotional. That she is just an emotional fool. But that's not the case. This is bigger than being an emotional fool. This is knowing exactly what we have, the mess that we have found ourselves into. This is knowing the game that they are playing. Now, in conclusion, after they play the blame game, every other person in this journey which they were, you know, they were segregated. That no one knows the part this one is going to play. No one knows. But at the end of the day, they now saw it was revealed to them. Then the one that is part of the family, shame will not allow him to come out and say, no, I did not do it. No, whatever they were saying is not authentic. He could not come to the, the, the bunk the allegation that which states that he knew that his brother was kidnapped and he concealed it. And he could not come to the bunk the allegation that he is part of what happened to his brother. 
he could not come to debunk the allegation when they say that he is Cain Ole Wanegi. There is nobody who is innocent who will not come and be vocal about that. And the reason why he did not come to do all those things, it is because he, don't, he does not know what information that these people that are making the claim has. He does not know what they have against him. Now, that is the reason why he has been playing cool dude. He's been playing cool dude. He does not want to actually provoke them. He doesn't want to provoke them. Now, let's take for example. To the extent Nelly Ofebu called Emmanuel Kano a fool and a boy. Nelly Ofebu called Kano Takano Cain. Cain. Nelly Ofebu called different people in that family by a nickname which signifies betrayers. Now, you will be wondering why did Canon Takano not come to say he did not sell his brother? This is what happened within that eight days. That all these shenanigans were happening even if there were things that need to be concealed. If he was innocent, he will find a way to navigate them. But he did not do it. I fought, I defended him in the past 12 months. Prior to the time when this thing happened last year, I was defending them for the sake of Kano's family. Not for the sake of them individually, for the sake of the Kano's family. That was the reason why I was defending them. But, uh, you know, little did I know that these people I am defending, you know, they have a skeleton in their cupboard. They were part of those that they were only playing blame game. Because when someone, people, when the uh, syndicate is playing a blame game, it will be very, very difficult for you to figure them out. You know, whenever you see a criminal gangs or syndicate playing a blame game, very, very difficult to solve that crime because you know you have seen that there is something fishy about all these people. Now, this person will say is this person. That person will say is this person. These people will, will be together today. Tomorrow they separate. Tomorrow they will tell you is that person. Tomorrow they will tell you know from Rita's. Remember when they started? Canon Takano was an autopilot when they started. Because that was when he started promoting Simon to go to Radio Biafra. That was when he told Simon that Professor Lumumba. Almazen Namdekano said that Professor Lumumba should cover him in Kenya. That was when all these things were going on. That Professor Lumumba should cover him in Kenya. Now, you will be wondering where are we are all this information coming from? We did not know. And now, after this Shenanigan. Radio Biafra failed to administer, admin, you know, um, the chief infiltrator who they have set up to take over, to be the face of all this shenanigan, which is Simon. They have placed him to be the face of all this shenanigan. And what destroyed this syndicate was, you know, Conflict of interest destroy all this syndicate that prompted many of them to start talking. 
and playing blame game. Because they know that they were all in, in it. And the only way that you cannot be certain who is through a blame game. Now, you could not come and debunk them. You didn't debunk them. But, you know, at the end of it, you will tell me the reason why Vanguard newspaper, I am still coming back there. I'm still coming back there. Just hold it. You could not debunk them upon all the allegations they lay on you. You could not debunk them. Now you will tell me the reason why Vanguard newspaper started promoting Canon Takano. What was the reason why Vanguard newspaper started promoting Canon Takano? And where they are promoting him is a place where he did not work. Now, and whenever they are promoting Canon Takano, Ejimako will be present. Even though Ejimako is not an international lawyer. I want you to pay attention because this is very, very sensitive one. Pay very good attention. If you don't pay attention, you will never pick it up. Now, this message I flashed on your screen by Vanguard was a message written in the 26th of October, 2021, when, when Mazen Nam, the colonel's wife, went to UN to demand for UN intervention on the inhuman treatment being meted on her husband and UN recognized it and they wrote to Kenya and Nigeria in April. In April, we are, which month did we find out? In July, April, May, June, July, which is three months after was the only time we found out that Mazen Namdekano's wife wrote to UN. Now, this is what Vanguard went and up updated. They went and updated this, which says the UN nation, United Nations has issued urgent appeal to both Nigeria and Kenya government, respectively, demanding immediate stoppage of any torture or violation or right commit or of right committed against the detained leader of the indigenous people of Biafra. Now, let's go further and to find out how Vanguard updated this news on Google SEO. UN also warned of serious consequences if the alleged allegation rather, of torture and violation of fundamental human rights against the IPOB leader we are confirmed. The UN intervention followed a petition to the UN by Kano's brother. By Kano's brother. This is where I have a big problem with. This is where I have a big problem with. Not only Kano's brother, Kanon Takano, and his special counsel, Mr. Loy Ejimako. Are you paying attention? Kanon Takano and his special counsel, Mr. Aloy Ejimako, that those, we are the people, Vanguard said that they filed this 
This was actually the news of 2021, but they updated it in the SEO so that whenever you come to search about this news, you find it first on Google. On Google. I don't know if you are understanding what I am saying. Now, you will begin to ask yourself, wherever they mention Canon Takano, they will mention Aloy Jimako. Aloy Jimako na wawa na echeche bikonu. Since that Canon Takano claim that there are lawyers, international lawyers, who are supposed to be doing international things, while Aloy Jimako is a local lawyer, which is supposed to be doing local stuff, which is seen to the legal issues of Mazenam the Kano's case in Nigeria, division of labor. Now, this, rem this reminds me, you know, when I am saying this, it keeps bringing my mind to different precepts that I don't want to be, you know, be fast so that I don't miss, up, miss out anything. So now I want you to underline Canon Takano by Vanguard and Alloy Jimako because I want to come there. Let me conclude the issue of blame game tactics. Now, Canon Takano did not come out to say that what these people are saying is a lie. He did not write it on his Twitter page. Nothing. Then at the end of all this, what we began to see, what we started seeing is that they pretend like everything is all right because people like us, for the love we have for Mazen Nam the Kano, and for the love we have for the household of Mazen Nam the Kano, we have to defend them without having any skeleton, without, you know, we have to defend them jealously and blindly. Now, at the end of the day, there is a saying that says, now, nah, is Yoku, when you throw it into the Atlantic Ocean, the fruit, it will come out surfacing where people will see it. Now, at the end of this thing all, you will be wondering why did they not go and debunk them? I didn't understand the reason why he didn't go and debunk them. I thought maybe he was just being, you know, non-talent or he was just being too ego egotistic to pay attention to this his fellow syndicate fellow perpetrators i was thinking that was the reason why he refused to acknowledge all those blame now when all these things started summing up we began to dig deep deep and deeper we found out many things, a lot of things. And, uh, you know, which I am going to tell you that you see all these media warriors that Simon Epa called their autopilot group of syndicate. All of them that is supporting them now. They are all politicians' agents. I just discovered very, very important stuff, which I might be, you know, giving you a hint to wait. Because that is not why I'm here. But I just remembered it now. Now, when after they are playing blame game, they descended on Kano's family first. So that when they descend on him, he wouldn't try to, to play, you know, smart. Because they know that he is very manipulative. They know very well that he can convince people. They know very well that he will be getting information before them. Because 
he happens to be the family member. And at the end of all this knowing everything about Kanon Takano, they were just saying it, saying it, saying it. But don't be moved because they were saying it and we are now agreeing with them. Because after all said and done, the investigation that is being conducted is now indicting the people whom we are defending, whom we've been defending, believing that they were a victim of the other syndicates. Not knowing that they were also the perpetrators because of greed, because of greed, envy, and jealousy. That is the only reason why they gave in. Now, when we found when I found out that there is something fishy about Canon Takano, you know, the first time SAG came to say he has been hijacked. I did exposition, you know, to actually warn them to stay back. And that exposition, the weak in the mind people distanced themselves from me, believing that I care. I don't care. You don't put food on my table. The fact that you call into my program and acknowledge what I was doing without me knowing your intentions of acknowledging what I was doing and you decided to become my friend. Did you know that during those periods, there were those people when I was defending them, they were sending their agent. Kanon Takano was sending his agent to even make me to send my broadcast to other platforms, which we are going to be, you know, those platforms that, we, you know, so that people will be hearing my defending them more and more. I didn't know their intention. And apparently I am not a blogger. I can send my exposition or any video to any any place because we are giving information that people need to digest. The first day after I did the first exposition on the Canon Takano, after I did that exposition on Canon Takano, the same person came and you no. Know, challenged me during that exposition, but he did that constructively, not knowing that people like me, whenever you write me a message in my inbox, when I read it, I already know where you are going. Whenever you call me on the phone, and you talk to me. I already know where you are going. It is not a brag. It is a reality. There are many unsolved mystery in my on my WhatsApp. They will be sending me messages, sending me some content. You know. They don't know that I already know where they are going, what they are trying to, without even communicating with them. Just the what they wrote to me. And it never, I, you know, I never got it wrong. They came to that program constructively. Try to, you know, demoralize me. You know, that I was doing the wrong thing. I said, okay. After that, things were going. Even those pages where they plugged me so that uh, the people will be hearing the news, the gospel that I was preaching, the way they removed me there, <laughs> you know, the way they removed me there. It was after so 
sometimes because I didn't care whether they removed me. I was the one doing them a favor. <laughs> Not them doing me a favor. How they removed me from that page was a story that I don't know how. Now, one day I was searching through my inbox on Facebook. I saw where they wrote to me. First, I think they sent me a message. Please remove yourself in that page. Because I didn't want to just remove it. Because, you know, these people were constructive in everything they do. Please remove yourself from that page. You know, uh, that um, we need to do some review. We need to review some certain things on the page. Maybe after the review, we will bring you back. It was after they must have removed me. That's when I saw the, the message. It does, or, or, or it does, it does, it didn't even move me. I said, okay, I can see the handwriting on the wall. The day I exposed Patrick or the Namwa, the day I exposed him, or the Namwa, the day I exposed him, they put a call through to me that to tell me that I have derailed, that I have derailed, that I am no longer in line with the gospel I supposed to be preaching because I am now going deeper. Because I was now going deeper. That is the reason why when this guy called me telling me that immediately when he called me i picked up the call i heard his voice i already knew why he came or who sent him to call me and i gave him my peace after that that's when I noticed that there is something behind all these things. Let me start making investigations in all these shenanigans that is playing out. I began to make investigation. And the same way they manipulated all these people was the same way they tried to manipulate China Samoru and Chike Dosiem. But because those people was resolute, they could not go into their brain because they wanted to manipulate them too, to join force with their criminality. Remember I told you, when they started all these things, they were, you know, they will not tell you what they say to other, another person. They don't know which game you, you will be playing, role you are going to be playing in this regard. They will not know which game the other person, which part the other person will be playing in this regard. It is only when everything unfolds you will see yourself. No. So I'm here. That's how they did it. But because of the mental strength that these people in the leadership has, because of their mental strength, they were able to withstand and not fall a victim of these manipulators. And that is the reason why they are still standing. And because they could not be manipulated, that is also part of the reason why people start playing, the, the, you know, these people started playing all this game of blame blame game they want to blame everything <laughs> you know they want to blame everybody then at the end of all this blame game where did it landed you now where it landed them is that they are being busted if these people that you see they are genuine I am going to mention them and give you the reason why you will understand they are not genuine. If Kanon Takano is genuine, and the reason why Kanon Takano was being lambasted, because after all these things, someone ever was supposed to be in this position of Chike Dozium. 
And Senon Takano was supposed to be the people that would make it possible. Apparently, Canon Takano was interested in being in position two. Conflict of interest, which made them to be exposed today. At the end of the day, now, Canon Takano, the reason why he, you will understand that what I am telling you about him is the truth, is he refused to defend them. He refused to defend himself. He refused to defend himself. Number two, he paid Vanguard to promote him. Number three, he went where the money is and aligned himself where the money is. He becomes so that when he will be passing, you will be saying, welcome the money. Welcome the money. Money, 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 money. Then he will be, you know, every, the whole world will now be all around him. Like it will be all about him. Because he will be where the money is. He will be the man in charge. He, he actually want to be the man in charge. Now you will begin to ask yourself, why is it that ever since this thing happened, why has it been, why has it been so extravagant with money? He's been so extravagant with money. Why? Has it, why is he so extravagant with money? Number one of the being extravagant with money, the amount of money they will tell you they use to achieve lobbying or to go for lobbying, the amount of money he will tell you that they use in order to achieve what they achieve in Omaha. You know, because our lawyer, Jimako, is his right-hand side man. Let me tell you a little um, a story or background of our lawyer, Jimako. He is our able lawyer. Our able lawyer. Uh, but I am going to go into his personal activities right now so that we will know the reason why he aligned himself with Canon Takano and they were fighting a year four. Number one is that Barista Aloy Ejima Kosa is a very, very naughty guy. A very, very naughty guy. You know, he's a naughty guy. I can tell you. And why tell him to send me that uh, money. But why is he you know bringing his naughtiness you know closer to this struggle and now playing a constructive game with the canon takano a constructive game with the canon takano alloy is a naughty guy but in the legal field i could i will not say he does not know what he's doing he knows what he's doing but he's a naughty guy he can you know he can do like this weekly. Now he aligned himself with Canon Takano so that where they will spend 10 naira, they will tell you they spend 1 million naira. That is having history, creating a history and creating history that will go into the audit so that whenever you decide to say come and do audit and tell Biafrans 
how you've been eating and dishing out the money that we are putting together for the restoration of this, you know, divine movement. They will now write it accordingly. That is the game they are playing. Recruited Ejimako to his corner, to his naughty corner. I am so sorry, but uh, the only thing I do not know is why Ejimako allow himself to come into a crossroad like this. Why did he allow himself to pass a crossroad like this? I have been seeing their activities and I did not want to ever talk about him because he is our Lego is a part of our Lego team. You know, but when there are things that we are dodgy. And these people were engaging themselves into when Michael Zokome was brought in by our uh, Lego Council, our Lego team uh, lead, Barrister Ejofo. When he was, he was brought in, there was a, a big conflict. There was a big conflict. Even a blind man could see the conflict. And who was their media warrior in this conflict? It was this man who called himself Master Prophet. He was the media warrior who was pushing, pushing propaganda, pushing propaganda. Against the lead council, Barrister Joffo. And when I am talking about these things that I am talking about, you should know before time. I am not in contact with Barrister Joffo. For those of you who may think, that I get my information from him. I am not in contact with him. Me and him, we, you know, we know each other. The last time I was in contact with him was the time of the interview. That was the last time. But I know what is going on. I know a lot that is going on. Now, they we are fighting tooth and nail when Barista Jofo introduced Ozokome because of eventually he was supposed to discuss with them you know so that when he discussed with them probably so that they will put a price tag kafa wena collect double then as for half because they know he is not in their game. They start fighting him. You will bear me witness that after that Ozokome was, pro, you know, was introduced, there was another son whom was brought in by Aloy Ejimako. Did you see where that conflict of interest started leading these people? Because they believe that we are supposed to be the ones who will produce sand. Because sand is big money. And this big money, we can double it and collect big money from it as well. It's all about money. Then after that, that is the reason why you saw fighting. When Barista Joe right information. Or when Barista Jofo, let me now tell you the reason why I am saying this. Let me bring it to your to your to your screen as per reason why I am actually saying this. Number one, I have told you about the the 
Vanguard and their news. When somebody who is supposed to be a local lawyer is now covering the path of a national lawyer, you know, it is something that a question that we need to ask ourselves because do you know why you have the right to ask yourself because these people are your employees they are biafran's employees you see a lawyer Dimako, he is employee of biafran's because obro canon takano that is giving him paying him you know it is not canon takano that is paying him whatever he is doing for whatever he is doing, it is IPOB that is paying him for whatever he is doing. So whichever thing they want to present to you, trying to act very smart as if they are now the leadership of this movement. Now there is something I want to read for you, then throw more light to what I have been saying here. Let me bring it to the screen. I want to read for you this article written by Aloy Ejimako. I want to bring it to you so that we will So that you will know, let me show you before we go back to it. I hope you are seeing this in front of my screen. So, Aloy Ejimako wrote this, say it is an update from Onyendu. He said it is an update from Onyendu. He said, let me read it out loud. Update, I just exited, oh, update, sorry, update. I just exited from today's visitation with Onyendu. Hashtag MK, MNK, we debriefed on all issues at hand. All issues at hand. In particular, he directed me to publicly convey his abiding desire that all media attacks against one another must stop forthwith. He wants all differences resolved privately. He wants all differences resolved privately. Now, you will begin to ask yourself, why is it that all of a sudden, boom, Barrister Jimako become the information minister or become the man of information. Since the inception of Mazen Namdekano's kidnapping or disappearance, when did Jimako come to clarify some on, on misunderstandings or uncertainty, telling you that Mazen Namdekano issued a, pro, a, a proclamation on how we are going to solve a pressing matter that we have at hand in every given time or in those days, except last week. Do you know why? Barrister Jimako, I am sorry, but there is something Mazen Namdekanu said in this struggle. He said he, the only people who are going to be here are people with no blemish. People with no blemish. So, that is the reason why 
I am making this public because you took a, a wrong move. You took a wrong move. Why? Because it is affecting where you are. That is the reason why you did it, because it is selfishness that made you do it. I don't have issues with you. If you bring a shaking hand tomorrow, I will shake you. Life goes on. Because it is important that I will say it. Very, very important in this struggle. Now, he went to tell you Onyendu said. When was the last or the first time that Ejima come to tell you update from Onyendu or what Onyendu or instruction given to us by Onyendu? Did it ever happen? The answer is no. But the, this time around, it is about issue that might quench where they are exploiting us one way or the other. Where he is benefiting from this exploitation. International and local lawyer. That is the, the reason why he is learned this move. This move, I can categorically tell you it is a lie. Mazen Namdekanu never said anything. <laughs> if there is any message that Mazen Namdekanu will give to us, we know which channel that Mazen Namdekanu pass his message, and we know how that channel delivers his message. We know the channel that Mazen Namdekanu use to deliver his message. And this one is unusual. When I saw this message, I was marveled. I saw it, uh, was it three or four days ago? I was looking at it. I read it like five times. I said to myself, no, this cannot be. But let me not just talk about it until I find out, until I become sure. Now, Barrister Loy is not, Mazen Namdekano does not send message via Barrister Aloy Ejimako to IPOB. And Mazen Namdekano Aloy Ejimako is not an IPOB, but an employee of IPOB. Are you paying attention? So he has no right to come and formulate a lie to tell us in this manner, which makes him, you know, his actions and his activities very dodgy. It is very dodgy. And he did not go to tell Mazen Namdekanu for Mazen Namdekanu to give him guidelines to tell us to solve it privately. When Kanon Takano notice that his criminality is being exposed even by those who defended him for 12 months that he, the, the people he believed that are gullible because when i was defending him the last 12 months he will be saying to himself ah, this guy is very gullible if ever he knows if ever he knows and he think I'm his Mugu because I was defending him. To be honest with you, it is not your name that I am defending. I am defending the Mazen Nam the Kano, the reputation of his family. That was what I was defending. Not you. Maybe you got carried away believing that it was you. And believing that because you are seen to be Mazen Nam the Kano's brother, that Naro Gaga Hafunse, without little did you know that the 
Telling you does not mean that when we find out your evil agenda, we will not expose it. Biafra struggle is for everybody. Biafra struggle is for every reasonable human being who Nigeria, you know, who call themselves a Biafran in Nigeria and outside Nigeria. Whoever experienced Nigeria, they supposed to be, you know, Biafra struggle supposed to be something that, you know, anybody need to be, you know, Will I call it, uh, you don't even need it to be, you know, is it opinionated or dogmatic about it? You just need to be focused in that regard because it is our freedom we are fighting for, which has taken many lives that people believe. It is a source of exploitation for them. And the Canon Takano, you are using Biafra money to establish yourself today. After concealing and advising Mazen Nam the Kano to make his trip private, that he bought his own ticket by himself. You are exploiting IPOB. Through that moron called Nenayanya. Because she's a moron. If calling him or her a moron will make you to lose faith in me, my pleasure. The reason why I am saying this is because Biafra movement is not for individual. It is not for individual. It is not for personal use. It is for, it is a collective movement that is being guided, led by the one and only man who has no blemish that when he blew the trumpet, we all queued and followed him, is the leader of Mazen Nam the Kano. That is the reason why we saw it and we joined. And we joining does not mean that we are Mugus. For Canon Takano, Nen Nayanya, and Ejimako. Because I am not going to mention all this uh, criminal syndicate in the likes of autopilot you do. I'm not going because those are those people, those things, those people are saboteurs. They are all politicians. And in no due time, I am going to show you. And I will give you a taste of it. Towards the ending of this broadcast, I will give you something to take home to, for, you know, with. So after all these things, what they are doing, when Canon Takano demand money, then Nayanya dish it out. She dishes out. And in this time, in this time around, I am not actually telling Nen Nayanya that she is you know, emotionally fooled. She knows what she is doing. She is part of it. Nigeria politicians gave these people an assignment. Gave them an assignment. And what I am talking about is the IPOB, you know, connected. Nen Nayanya. Canon Takano, not Ejimako. Ejimako story is finished. Like I told you, Ejimako, Mazen Nam the Kano did not tell him anything. That was a move that Canon Takano made. 
you know, believing that once he come he come up with that stunt, that the Mughals will believe it. It is a favor deed to him by Ejimako because Mazen Namdekano did not send any message through to Ejimako. All this while that we are defending Kanon Takano, there was no message to say, uh, solve it inside the room. There was no message like that. And I can categorically assure you that Mazen Namdekano did not give Ejimako that message. Ejimako gave himself that message. You know, he gave himself that message. Confirm it if you have any source of information. And if you confirm it and they say, I am lying, I will come publicly and apologize as well, the, way, the same way I announced it. There was no message given to him. Amazon Namdekano does not give a message to somebody that is not going to pass it through to the US. So when you realize I'm lying, you call me, I will apologize. But as far as I am no, I am I am sure of my information, Mazen Namdekano did not send him to say such rubbish. Which actually will give lifeline to autopilot, which they have said that is that. Uh, the criminals who has been exploiting the struggle that Mazen Namdekano knows that they are there. It is not because of them that I am saying what I am saying. It is because of the truth. Mazen Namdekano did not send him. It was Kanon Takano who sent it. Marco. That is it. I am Judge Money. I am the one saying it. Mazen Namdekano did not send him. Now, having known that Mazen Namdekano did not send you to come and uh, give us information, the, the latest information minister, Barrister Aloye Jimako, with all due respect, I want you to stay clear in this shenanigan. I know that you like shenanigan. I know that you are very naughty. Please stay clear. Allow those who knows how to defend the truth, defend the truth. And stay clear of those who will implicate you or indict you so that I wouldn't have to come here again to call your name. I have defended even you in the past. When Nelly Ofebu said that you are a criminal, I have defended you in the past. The fact that I am defending you in the past does not mean that when I see you are a criminal that I will conceal it. Or the fact that I have defended you before when I see that you are doing something wrong, but that I will conceal it. No. This is a divine movement. So you need to go and become a divine lawyer to IPOB, to Mazen Namdekano. Not a shenanigan lawyer. Because you don't get yourself into a crossroad. Because there is an arrow that is moving so fast in that crossroad. Let it not pierce you. Be professional. Professionality is what you need. And focus. Get us a result and release our leader from detention. So that you will not have to listen to Kanon Takano again. He's not the one paying you. He is actually stealing from those paying you. That is exa exactly what is going on. He's enriching himself. And that is when they believe that uh, once they capture Mazen Namdekano, everybody can do what they want because they will tell you there is no more Biafra. There is no more Biafra. That is the reason why they started telling you there is no more Biafra, that it is you do. 
The connection started with Canon Takano, Caroline, Rita S. Bridget, Nelly. Okay, Nelly came from before Bridget. But Bridget is one might one woman that is very, very dangerous, who recruited some prophet, fake prophets, and telling them what to say. Tell them that if you don't go and rescue my son, I'm the canon, the DSS dungeon, he will die in 50 days. So that you will be emotional and go and kill him. You will be emotional and go there and mess up that something will happen to him. And they will blame you. That was the plan because they saw since it never happened in Kenya because they expect it to be swift in Kenya and they will hear the news they will put the blame on the leadership and they, it's all right once they put blame on the leadership automatically the structure is being destroyed and divided automatically IPOB cease to exist and the politicians win IPOB lose that was the plan. But when a man is planning, God is in heaven. Controlling the plan. And placing it in a way that everything you do will work in favor of the truth. That is the reason why they did all they did. Trying to bring, once they destroyed the, the names of those who are the leadership in the IPOB structure, they will now put the Eberima in Finland there. Now the Eberima in Finland will now, the only reason why they must put the Eberima in Finland there is because a very mind Finland believe in the philosophy of Ucha Maofo, Uwazurike, Asari Dokubo. Let's politicize this. Let's make it a political party. And at the end of the day, all this thing failed. They now started to find a way to make IPOB to be proscribed because they have given themselves a befitting name. That even if IPOB was proscribed, you know, today, you know, today they will continue to work strong in their autopilot and they do. One, bring autopilot. The initial plan was supposed to be do. One bring autopilot, and the reason why they chose Idu was because Idu is something Mazen Namdekano talked about. They wanted to change the narrative of that, that information that Mazen Namdekano told you to go and extract it. They wanted to take advantage of it. So that when they mention you do, you will say, yes, Mazenam the Kano talked about it. You are right. We are familiar with it. Now let's go with it. Now they proscribe by POB. Dead on arrival. Now, of course, if they proscribe by POB, or um, even if they don't proscribe it, if in Finland is able to go there and become the leader and become a, 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 a spokesperson, that means that if an Emma who go, they will rubbish it. Now, don't be surprised that this guy you see that is wearing baby in the face, promoting Simon Eba. I hope you know whom I am talking about. Solomon. <laughs> he is a politician, he's a political uh, campaigner. <laughs> I said this in my previous broadcast. I said it in my previous broadcast. The one wearing baby in his face. Do you know he is actually promoting Peter B in secret where he is showing his face? Where he shows his face, he is promoting Peter B. 
I don't know if we, you know, of course, because they are anonymous, because they stay anonymous, they want to stay anonymous, playing a double agent role. When they remove their one baby they are wearing in their face, they will go out there and do their the real bidding. Because these are double agents. All these people you see supporting else autopilot, in Finland writing junk all the time in the comment section. All of them are one Nigerianist that converted. And the, the reason why they started paying their support does not mean that all of them were in the game together. But because they never liked the philosophy of Mazen Namdekano and they have seen that he is a distraction to the movement, that is the reason why they decided to turn. And knowing that the shenanigan gives them YouTube money. The shenanigan gives them YouTube money. That is the reason why they are doing what they are doing. That is the reason why they are doing what they are doing. The guy that you call yourself Juan Solomon, he is promoting politicians. When he removes his Juan Solomon face, promotes politicians. Are you paying attention? Once he, there is a YouTube channel he created recently where he does his promotion. But I told you that I have been telling him, I have been telling him, by the time it will mature, I am going to bring it out and expose him. But just for your own information, I want you to understand what is going on. You know, he call himself obedient. <laughs> he call himself obedient. And his name is Abonga. Abonga. <laughs> he's, 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 um, you know, the nickname of his name is called Abonga. Abonga. <laughs> But let Kanaka no be Kajinaka. I'm a new one, you bo. I'm a new one, you bo. But Kanaka no be Kajinaka. I will expose you all one after the other. You call yourself obedient, eh? Be ne ye green, eh? No, no, obedient. With your new YouTube page, you create your full. EJ promote Pitobi. Okay. Okay, no. This is what all of them that are um, anonymous broadcasting to you. Because what they want to be doing, if they kill in the bush, they will come out to ask who killed. And their chief infiltrator will be telling you no election because they get their attention. That is exactly what is going on. And at the end of this all, they will all be exposed. Their plans was to kill Mazen Namdekanu, a swift death. Give him a swift killing. And the rubbish and politicize his ideology and legacy. After that, they wanted, they saw they couldn't make it. They know that the only, you know, the only, you know, pillar holding this movement right now in Mazenam the Kano absence is the DOS. That is the only pillar holding Mazen, no holding the movement that will be able to stand together to save Mazenam the Kano. If you leave Kanon Takano, you think he will save Mazen Namdekan? How is he going to save him? Ebo, when he is living large, after he got into trouble, how is he going to save him? 
because this is like it looks like this is the best thing that has ever happened to Canon Takano. They recruited the master prophet, you know, they recruited him. He was not part of the initial game because they never understand him. He stands. They recruited him. Now when they recruited him, he started talking from both sides of his mouth. Because he's the only media warrior. Of course, Canon Takano has. It is the only media warrior that Canon Takano have as we are speaking now. I wonder what time does he have to do his uh, uh, master profit. I wonder what time he, he he's using. I, I don't know how he's doing his master profit. Every time on, on a media space, is our boss. But this is exactly where I am going to be living it. But bear in mind, Canon Takano, change your evil ways before it becomes too late. You came to tell us you are the one who videoed the invasion of the military in Afaru Quebec. You told us you are the one who videoed it. Therefore, that's why you have the temerity to do what you are doing today because you videoed it. You are forgetting that there are people who died. You did not die. 28 people died. They are human beings. And you are coming to tell us you are the one who took the video. What were you trying to say? What is the meaning of you telling us that you are the one who took the video? Did they come to kill you? No, they came to kill the most relevant person. That is whom they came for. So... You want to continue to stand in the trauma. You know, we know you guys have a trauma. You know you guys were traumatized in that situation. But that does not give you the right to continue to, you know, to do all this, your evil act. It doesn't give you that right. You know, Stop playing games with people's intelligence. That is what you are doing. You are playing games with intelligence of Biafrans. With the infiltrators. That is what you are doing. But bear you in mind. Bear you in mind that... All these things you feel that now you are achieving today, at some point you will vomit them all. It is a blood money. If you like telling them Nayanya you are going to United Nations, he should give you a check of hundred thousand dollars or one million dollars. It is a blood money. And then Nayanya will give account. To all those money that she is, you know, handling in her care. Whether she like it or not. Whether she was a janja weed before she become IPOB, that is her own cup of tea. Because I heard she's uh, working for the zoo before. In the embassy. That is her own cup, cup of tea. When Biafra will remember you, Biafrans, when they will remember you, you will know that Biafra is a spirit and he knows where his people are and where his enemies are as well. I am going to leave it here. 
on this note. But there is something I want us to hear, to see. There is something our brother Mazde Wachineke posted, is it yesterday or two days ago? That video he posted said a lot. Let me just touch on that video before we, we, we call it a day. I am done with the in, in, inner enemy. Let me send a message to their sponsors. Let's send a little message to their sponsors. Now, where is that message? Let me, I want to. Sh I am quickly sending a message to their sponsor. Yes. Now, let me do a screen share. Where is it? <laughs> there is something about this video that our brother posted. I want us to hear this video. Over 300 years ago, our parents sold our brother now, why did I want to talk about over 300 years ago? Over 300 years ago. I want us to solve, you know, to work out something on the prophecy. So that I want you people to understand that what we are doing right now, it is the right thing. And it is the right time that we are going to get our independence. That is the reason why I want to touch on this video. He said over 300 years ago, you must go to Eco Biafra to watch this video. You watch it in full. If you want to watch that video, you go to Biafra time, you go to Eco Biafra or you go to Rapture Media. You watch it, you know, and you will understand it further. So the, the place I want to capitalize on now is 300 years ago, over 300 years ago, as at the time when he did this speech. He did this speech, I believe, when Obasanjo was a Nigeria president. I am not sure if my memory sounds me right. You know... He, or before, actually. And he said over 300 years ago. And if you go to the law of Exodus, the law of Exodus stated that the reason why we are suffering and we are being oppressed 
it is because of the sins of our ancestors, which the sins of our ancestors were the mistakes that they made, including selling their people for slavery. Those were the mistakes that they made. That law of Exodus stated it now, over 300 years ago, when this started, which today we are now in over 400 years ago, when this started. Now, if you want to work it out, God gave the law of Exodus to use it to remind us that he will use the sins of those people and visit the, first, the third and the fourth generation. And when you want to work it out, the lifespan of human being, let's work it out at 125 years in order to be sure. The lifespan of human being, the ancient people who, um, so I can say the ancient people, not the, the ancient, ancient people. Before this colonial, you know, intrusion started, the lifespan can last for like 125. 125. He will use the sins of our, for, our forefathers to visit the third and the fourth generation. He visited the third generation, which was what led the slavery, selling of slavery. He visited the third generation, which was what lingered or triggered the, third, the, war, the war that Nigeria killed. 3.5 million women and children with the help of British, their British counterpart. Now, the fourth generation. And the remnant of the fourth generation are the ones that are going to be the forgiving generation. The remnant of the fourth generations going to be the forgiving generation. I know that in the telecommunication, they count telecommunication generation with 35 years or 37 years. But I, I'm not counting it like that because it is now five generation of telecommunication. But in our, remember telecommunication, when did they start counting generation in 90s? Now our own generational counting, we give them now we are almost 500 years of slavery, 500 years of predicament, which we are the remnant of the fourth generation who are going to get freedom for the fourth, the remnant of this fourth generation. We are going to get freedom for the fifth generation. Because the remnant of the fourth generations are the forgiven people. By Elohim, the reason why I have to bring this video in front of you before I tell you this, it is because I want you to hear something about the years when we started this journey for freedom. Today, it is more than 400 years. The fourth generation, the remnant of the fourth generation is what is fighting this battle. So the fourth generation will face away. The remnant is going to continue. And that fourth generation are those who cannot want to join you, who does not want to join you or does not to want to be disciplined or want to be part of what you are doing because they belong to those generations because that is the reason why the Bible says that two paths of us 
will be cut off. Not I can't say the Bible. The prophecy said two parts of us will be cut off. So the killings you see all over the place. Chukwoki Kabiyama is counting. Two parts of us will be cut off. And the remnant of these two paths will bring their supplant will bring their offering for beyond the river of Ethiopia. Zephaniah, the book of Zephaniah. For beyond the river of Ethiopia. This is actually what I saw before I began to follow Mazenam the Kano. I did that calculations. Because I know about the prophecy. And I know about the law. And after all these things, we are going back to Leviticus. After all this journey that we are embarking upon, we are going back to Leviticus. And that Leviticus is the law of our land, which we have, you know, they have demonized those laws through religious practices. They have demonized those laws, ordinana, our ordinana. And they replace it with Omenala, which is Alubala for Buru Omenana. They replace it with that. And in that regard, we are going to take our offering for beyond the river of Ethiopia, where there is a zero latitude. Where there is a zero longitude, when well, Mazen Nam the Kanu will say that, of course, you will not understand. That is where the suppliant of Chukwu Kikabiyama will bring their offering. And they will now recognize that they are not supposed to be revolting against their Odinana. They have to start revolting against their Omenala. There was something China Samoru was saying yesterday that when somebody die, people will place them in a mortuary for years. Destroying, that is wasteful expenditures. Wasteful expenditure. The greatest respect you are going to give to a fallen person is six feet. Six feet, then you do the tradition as per required. When you go and hang a great man or a great woman in a fridge, you are not allowing them to rest in peace. Because these are people who have to reincarnate. Our people will reincarnate. We are the ancient people. That DNA can never be faced out. That is the reason why they continue to reincarnate. And when you keep them in the fridge or in your freezer, whatever you may call it, which is what, you know, European civilization brought to us, and we call it Omenana because Arubala for it is a sin that lasted for one year. It becomes Omenana. And how they make sure that they will, you know, they will erase your Odinana. It is by bringing into your curriculum what they want you to learn. And they will call it this is civilization they will tell you this is civilization and you have to embrace it when you are busy embracing civilization that you don't know the origin or you don't even know to how to revolt with that civilization and make it better for you rather you will be following this so-called civilization blindly 
the first place where there was civilization originated in Africa. The place you call the East Africa today, the land of Egypt, which is all part of the Middle East, is East Africa. It was the invasions and the crusaders that started amending the maps and renaming the maps to where it is going to favor them. Now the ancient civilization started in Africa, in the land of Egypt. The ancient people were the people, you know, introduced this ancient civilization. You will see, of course, the example of it, the Egyptian pyramids. The Egyptian pyramids. A capstone on top of a capstone. Build a mysterious pyramid. There was no, you know, artificial intelligence. There was no, you know, robot that would break stones because these people were divine and ancient people. They were able to brainstorm. They were able to bring, you know, a lot of innovation, which the Europeans who were living in Cocos Mountain came by in 325 AD when they started their, you know, crusade. After the Arab crusade, Arabic crusade, they started their own. And they actually revolted against the Arab crusade and brought their own in their own ways. That is the reason why they are seen as the one in a million today. Because when they came in, they learned the ancient civilization from Africa. They went home. They revolted. They had had industrial revolution. They, you know, I think they actually had this industrial revolution either in the 16th or 17th century. They now started replacing manpower with artificial intelligence power, which began to make Africa lame because we were known as hardworking people. And when they learn, not only that they learn our ways of industry, they went and they refurbish it, they modernize it in the way it will favor them. While modernizing it, they made sure that they place us in a hold. In, they place us on hold. You should not go anywhere. Sit here by making sure that the resources that can enable you to, you know, have even industrial revolution is not going to be utilized by you it's not going to be controlled or determined their, you know, their worth by you. At the end of the day, they, they wrote a history that we are championing today. Remove our history in our curriculum, which is the reason why our people say that Naru Bafo, Oburo Menana, after one century, their history they wrote to us become our history. Our history becomes in their archives. We cannot assess them. That is the reason why so many of our people are very, very confused today. When we tell you that Nigeria started existing in 1914, it is a Niger company owned by Britain. Nigeria never existed. And we are ancient people. How can we be called Nigeria that never existed in ancient days? 
And that is what the history that they have written to you, after 100 years, it becomes a norm. Umenana. Which so many of you are very, very reluctant to understand the reason why you have to destroy that structure before you will build a new one. So that you will build a new one that is being championed and regulated by you. It will not be that easy, but it is possible. Resilience is what you need. Resilient is what they use in order to come in and conquer you and make sure that they took what you have. Why do you think that they started taking us for slavery? The reason why they did take us for slavery, it is when they are trying to bring this ancient civilization to them. They use you to, you know, to bring civilization in their land. After that, so many of our people, they saw that the only way they will bring this civilization home, industrialization home, you know, is to bring these people as a slave. And they will work in our vineyard. They will work in our field. They will work in our site and make sure that they build something better than what they built in Africa, in Egypt. And they did. They achieved that. And uh, even though they achieved that and achieved extra, they never let you be. They never let you go. They never, you know, say, let me settle you people. We have bladed that our blood is about to finish. Let me just save you while you are still breathing. Then you will recover the blood that you are breathing, you know, that you are bleeding every day. They did not. In our own days, in the law of Exodus, it teaches us how to have apprentice, you know, apprenticeship. When you take somebody to serve you for five years, you settle them, you give them money, and they will start that same business. That is how we expand our riches. Because we do things together. And they introduce their own in the name of slavery. We buy you. You do that thing that you have to do for us. In hunger and in thirst. Deuteronomy 28. In hunger and in thirst. You will serve your enemies until thou be destroyed. And because we are destroyed today, that was what is called psychological manipulation. The prophecy is in the Deuteronomy 28. 1 to 15 is where it talks about the you know, benefit of being obedient to the law of um, Exodus. Benefits of being obedient to the law of Exodus and Leviticus. And you know, people will pray, God, save me. God, keep me alive. God, do this. God has given you the law that will keep you alive. God has given you the law that will make you successful. God has given you the law that will make you, you know, live long. The same way when you go to people's countries, you find a law there. When you contravene these laws, you find yourself in trouble. Sometimes you even find yourself being killed. When you go to where there is a traffic light, you skip this traffic light, you will find yourself on the other side. Maybe you are going to die by another car, you know, colliding with you. That is a law. And the same law is how God placed it. Do not muddle. Do not fornicate with another man's wife. And the Nejana Lamunya Made Degi Kubogin Kagaga. 
because uh, you and our uh, on your way law that governs that you know on your way punishment that follows that law he said do not go and take something that does not belong to you as you know she he gives you law and the punishment that is for it now we got zuri in a nation abobogi Gaga. at the end of it who are you going to blame is it to who gave you the law that he knows that this law is what will carry you day after day he gave you a sabbath day to rest so that you don't walk 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 and one day you will break down and die without resting that is being obedient to something that is going to be beneficial to your health now when these people came they violated everything turn it everything upside down today it is working against the mankind that is the reason why i say why did, after we are done in this journey that we are embarking upon we are going back to leviticus the one they say to you that jesus christ came and abolished there is no such it is the Europeans who abolish that law. We must go back to it because they made us to have a self-hatred on ourselves. When we talk about self-hate, we are talking about in a situation whereby you are going to see that this is whom you are. Whom you are is this. You are, you are actually rebelling against yourself. You know, you look at yourself in the mirror. You are rebelling against yourself. The things that will say, you know, make you a better person. You are rebelling against it. And now you, when you, people tell you about your traditions and the good norms and value system in the ancient days, you will tell them, no, we are into civilization now. You are now rebelling against whom you are, embracing the one that is not you. Civilization is different from your own, you know, norms and value system. Today they are preaching feminism, forgetting that Adam was in the Garden of Eden without being compromised for how many years? Without being compromised for many years. To, for many years, he was not compromised. Now God created Eve and brought Eve. And Eve was, you know, it was like Eve was practicing feminism during that time. Are you paying attention? I want you to pay very good attention because if you don't pay attention on this one, you will miss it. And those women who practice feminism they will get it wrong. Like my sister, uh, I've forgotten her name, that is a feminist. Now in the garden, Eve was like he, she was in charge. That was when she was able to manipulate Adam and give Adam the same that place us where we are today which i believe that is the reason why god changed it and turn it around and say that a woman must be under obedient does not mean that in our tradition that we do not respect women a woman is a pride of every man in our tradition. Those who practice uh, domestic violence, those are the people rebelling. And those are the people who does not understand their manhood. Those are the people practicing domestic violence because they are not man enough. When they grow up, I believe they will stop. It is something you have to grow up to stop. The fact that feminism is against our 
belief system a moral because god gave a law and gave punishment to man and gave punishment to woman punishment of a man is that you are going to suffer before you make ends meet the, uh, you know that is we are talking about uh, ancient people here we are not talking about uh, the people you know the people who changed everything according to the book of daniel 12 4 they will hope to change the law and time which they did sabbath day they tell you is sunday many things they have manipulated now at the end of it all he placed women under obedient. Under what? Obedient. For they have violated the law. The command that Adam could not violate in his old year. Adam started suffering because of the woman, you know, being manipulated. He placed woman under obedient. And the same people who made you to be, continue to rebel against yourselves, which is whom you are, your good norms and value system, because it has been demonized, it has been called the old ways, without you knowing that there is a difference between your culture, your ordinana, and the civilization. Civilization is something that comes with artificial intelligence, aeroplane, you know, that is civilization, you know, brain for IR, that is civilization. But they made you to believe that civilization is all about you, living your ways of life and pursuing the another nation's ways of life. When God made everybody and made you make sure that he gave you your own ways of life, through which he is pleased. And you decided to go away. That is the reason. What am I trying to say? I am trying to tell you the reason why so many people are rebe rebelling against this movement. Because the curse or the sin that, that you know lasted for one century is the problem they have. And that is the problem that is making them rebel against whom they are. Believing that they are rebelling against our ways of, you know, civilization. Get it clearly. You are rebelling on, uh, you know, you are actually rebelling against whom you are. Yourself. That is the self-hatred we have. Instead of and you are believing that you are rebelling against your old ways of, you know, your old ways of making phone calls or sending a message to people. That is not, you know, it is not your, your, your good norms and value system. It is different from civilization. Civilization came with a lot of things like we are, you know, the benefit of 4IR, we are able to communicate in real time. You are listening to me. I am on my own end. You are there in your, at your own end. You are able to, we are able to converge. You are able to, you know, communicate. That is civilization. That is industrial revolution. But what you, whom you are, you can never change it because you are become, you are following civilization. If you decide to change whom you are because you are following civilization, it means that one day they will install machine in you that will be powering you. Instead of you and your immune system powering you, the machine will start powering you. Since you don't know what is civilization and whom you are, the difference between them. So this guy in front of you told you 400 years. He told you, he went ahead and said that there's nobody is Nigeria. If you want to listen to it, you go to Eko Biafra, you listen to it properly. No one is Nigeria. Nigeria, that means Nigeria was created. It is neo-colonial enclave. It is British creation. 
It never existed. And somebody who called themselves the intellectuals will now continue to live under another man's, you know, agenda. Another man's principle. And tomorrow you will wake up and say that we are that you are you have freedom because this you stole from your nation, you build a mansion when you walk up, drive around, you are throwing money on the air. People will you will believe that you have freedom. While you are driving around, you drive with security, you have freedom. Why are you then moving with security since you have freedom? So these are the things when you look at them, you will understand that you have fallen short. You, those who see themselves as intellect, they are the people who are actually setting you back because they believe they know better than you. They do not know that the principles of lives is, you know, it is the principles of life lies on your own ways of life, whom you are and how you were polluted. And the, when you were polluted, they, the throne of me said, they will cleave unto you until thou be destroyed. And the, the things that God bless you with another nation will inherit. They will make use of it. It will work for them. It will never work for you because you are rebelling against yourself. You are rebelling against whom you are. What Elohim sees you to be. That whenever he is looking for you, he knows what he, how he positioned you, whom he made you to be. He will look for you there and he will find you. But now he can no longer find you where he positioned you. Because you have rebelled against the way he made you to be. Believing that you are chasing after civilization. The way he made you to be, he gave you civilization. Which these people that are leading you on to your destruction came and they learned it from you. They made make sure that your own ways, they now, you know, mesmerized your brains that you will not understand the difference between civilization and the, your ways, whom you are. That he turned his back on you. That is the reason why. If you pray from now to tomorrow. Because he doesn't know you anymore. It is after only 400 years. After he must have dealt with you. In the next 400 years. Because of that oppression. His people will now begin to retrace where they have fallen short and they will go and embrace it then he will call them you know bride and we will call him husband because god is married to us i am going to leave it here until we meet again you should stay safe and stay informed Bye for now.